engineering courses, which have been, um, that's a question, obviously MIT is quite known for the engineering courses. So um, if you have someone who's onshore and say they've done a bachelor of BTEC from India, um, be it civil or mechanical or electrical, and they've come in to do a grad dip in business or project management in, um, in New Zealand, they've finished the course and they've now taken series of open work visas. Um, so the, you know, what is the situation for them? Can, obviously when they're onshore, they're looking at residence pathways, mm -hmm. engineering fits into the skill shortage um, areas. Um, is there an option for them to go back into doing engineering and then also having an open work visa? Does the can they go back into bachelors with an RPL or can you explain that? Yeah, they what they can do is we have um, the school did um, an assessment project, so they looked at a range of degrees in India because we saw that we were getting a lot of students coming from the same institutions or the same type of institution. So we have something in place called credit recognition. So credit recognition is where we recognize the, the degree. And then what the school did is they, they made a, a very clear um, assessment. So someone with, for instance, a, a BE would be eligible for up to two years of credit recognition, which means they could finish the bachelor's degree at MIT in one year. Someone with a BTEC would need to um, complete the qualification in one and a half years. Now, what we look at is that a student should have passed their degree with a good second division pass, so above 50% um, GPA. And they should, if it's a four-year degree, they should not have taken more than five years. So those are the That's main criteria around RPL. And most of that has been mapped so that it can come into the international team. And in most cases, they can go back with um, an offer. In some cases, we will still go back to the school. So we also take into account how long ago someone completed their qualification. So if it's more than five years, what we do is we refer that to the school. But normally what we find is most candidates who have a gap will also have relevant work experience. So as long as someone can provide us with a, um, you know, a detailed CV, then we can pass that on to the school and they'll advise us um, what we can offer. But that, that has been working very strongly for us. That's fantastic. So basically, if I understand this correctly, someone who is, wants to go back to engineering can actually apply for the RPL, get into the bachelor's degree again in New Zealand, finish that degree in say about a year year and a half depending on obviously yep. the case and you know, the background and once they finish the year year and a half and this is sort of my immigration hat on once you finish your bachelor's degree you will be eligible to get another post-study work visa for three years which allows you enough time to look for a skilled job so that's a fantastic pathway for a lot of those people that have left engineering and then have come in to do business and are now working at dairies or supermarkets with really not much Pathways, so you know that's fantastic. That, I, that thank you for that. We've got a lot of live questions. Sorry. Oh yeah, no, you go. I was just going to say there's a lot of benefit around doing the degree because the degree comes under the um, IPENS or the Engineering New Zealand um, Recognition Group. Plus, it's an internationally benchmarked qualification. It comes under the Dublin Accord. So there's a mm. lot of strength in doing that that degree program, which we think sets them up better around that employability. Can someone with a business background and working in say retail, so say someone in New Zealand, they came here to do a, a business course, um, level five and six, and they were working in say a retail shop or a liquor store, mm -hmm. um, and now they want to get into engineering. Is there a way that they can just do into a bachelor's degree, get into a level five and six, or or maybe have a pathway to get into the engineering because they've got no background in engineering? What's what's for these people? I think what we have to look at, to get into an engineering program, you need to have at least year 12 passes in maths and physics. So if they've come, if they, we will go back to their schooling. And if they have got passes in maths and physics at year 12, depending on how well they do. So if you've done well in your year 12, if you've got, I think it's above 70% GPA, you can join straight into the degree. If you're below that, you might enter into the diploma 
and then from the diploma complete and then look at what your options are after the diploma. Mm. So, okay. yeah, we just need to look at your um, high school results. Yeah. Cool. Okay. No, that's really good. That's quite helpful because that, that is a question that we get asked quite often. Um, so another one that is quite often, as you know, that from India, we've talked about someone who's got a BE or a BTEC, but there's also uh, a lot of people from India that do a diploma, um, say yeah. a diploma in mechanical engineering. Um, so that person, if they're looking at coming into New Zealand, so the student is say offshore, um, and they're wanting to come into New Zealand to be on the right, you know, so we always suggest clients that are even offshore, to be on the right foot from the very start. You don't want to do a course and then re-enroll later on. Um, for those people to remain in engineering, what would be your advice? What can they pursue if they want to remain in mechanical engineering field? Sure. Well, they can also apply for credit recognition. So I should have mentioned before, sorry, but if they've done one of the state technical board um, diplomas, um, and again, they've met the... Um, the entry criteria around their grades, then they would be awarded one year of credit recognition, which would leave them with two years to finish the degree. So we're seeing a lot more diploma students actually looking at that as an option because it, it matches, I think, what they would have been able to do if they stayed on and, and joined a degree in India. I think most students in India from a, a diploma would enter into the second year of the degree. So it gives them the same opportunity. But but it comes back to the fact that the degree that they finish in New Zealand is a, a Dublin Accord degree. So engineers will know there's something called the Washington Accord, yes. the Dublin Accord, and the Sydney Accord. What it means then is it, their qualification is recognised outside the country where they studied. So it has a lot of... Um, extra, I think, opportunity for students as well as employability in New Zealand. But those diploma students, yeah, look at the degree. Yeah, exactly. And I just, yeah, I just, this is, I think the fact that they can get an RPL or cross credit is just great because mm -hmm. they can actually continue and put value into their career. Um, I think we were just talking about that, you know, um, organically, I think there's been some predominant markets for um, international students like India and China where people have just opted as, you know, studied to study as international students in the first instance. But now we were just discussing offline, you and I, that there's some emerging markets where the people are looking at really investing into their careers and their academic qualifications. And I think South Africa is one of those markets yep. where you were talking about maritime um, courses yep. and those, um, you know, um, can you just talk to us about that? The, the maritime course sounds really interesting. I'm not actually aware about the course. Okay. Can you talk well, about maritime... a little bit about MIT is the only provider of the advanced maritime engineering certificate. So people who have a maritime background will know that if you have been working in one of the, um, say, the, the um, shipping industry, you might be working on a cargo ship or you might be working in some of the other big um, shipping organizations, if you want to, most of those are international, so they might be owned by international companies. So people need international um, certification. So MIT is in a position to be able to provide courses that lead to that international certification. So the basic one would be the, um, it used to be called the ME3 program, and it goes all the way through to a qualification called Mates and Masters. But what it's doing is it's um, allowing people from that industry to get an international qualification so that they can move up within the, the shipping environment. So MIT does a lot of um, training in that area. And we've been seeing an increase in students coming through from the UK, coming through from, from India, from Sri Lanka, um, from a range of countries coming to to join the qualification. Fantastic.